you know, there's just something about that cup, that cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, and you take that first sip and you go, ah. It's universal. It's absolutely universal. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? You look mild. <laughs> We do have a couple of patron saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Yay, George and John! And John said, I know you say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you join us, and the world will be as one. And George, not quite as introspective, bowling is not a sport, because you have to rent the shoes. <laughs> Over at the uh, Center for Spiritual uh, Living, uh, next Saturday is uh, Michael Mandrell. Corned beef dinner, concert, on the back, been on the back table for a few weeks. Next, next Saturday. Cool stuff. Always fun to have uh, things to do in the Tri-City. Spring is a wonderful time for things to do in the Tri-City. There's tons of stuff. And all summer long, I can't wait for it to get warm. <laughs> Although it's been pretty doggone nice so far. The hottest place on Earth is around a lightning strike, which can reach as much as 54,000 degrees, five times hotter than the surface of the sun. Wow. Amazing. That's hot stuff. Probably say something like that, but I won't. Never contend with a man who, that, who has nothing to lose. Uh, a minute's success pays the failure of years. Mm. Nothing fails like success because we don't learn from it. We learn only from failure. Mm -hmm. I must be one of the most learned people in the world. I didn't know where the word discount came from. This is a little bit in depth, but we'll get through it. <laughs> Tradesmen apparently began using the premium technique quite early. There is evidence that the Italians were first to knock off stated prices in bargaining. The French adopted the custom by 1500 and, influenced by the Italian slang, called it decompte, taken from the word count. Apparently, the practice consisted of selling merchandise by count, setting aside a portion of the lot when computing its cost. Crossing the English Channel and merging as discount, the premium in goods was abandoned in favor of reduction in price. As early as 1622, English merchants offered a discount on pepper sold in Holland. Its popularity spreading, the practice became so general that it became a standard device in modern selling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <coughs> oh, this is one. Um, houses and other buildings uh, have overhangs or eaves on the edge of the roof. If a, private, in a, if a private meeting was going on and you wanted to be nosy and hear what was going on, you would climb upon the roof and position yourself right at the edge, by the eave, and hear what was going on. <laughs> Some people might. But the information you improperly gain without permission drops from the eaves and into your ears. <laughs> yeah, I know, it just does. Uh, like, really? I had a cat once, lived up in the mountains in California. L middle of the night, heard this meowing. I go, where's mom the cat? I mean, I heard her, she's not anywhere around. Where in the heck is she? And then I finally heard, well, she's outside, but where? She's on the roof, hanging over the edge, <laughs> looking upside down in the room, meowing. <laughs> When people see uh, a cat's litter box, uh, they always say, oh, you have got a, you've got a cat? Just once I want to say no, it's for company. <laughs> <laughs> Employment application blanks always ask who is to be called in case of an emergency. I think you should write an ambulance. <laughs> always thought that. Always thought that. Adult. A person who has stopped growing at both ends is now growing in the middle. <laughs> Beauty parlor, a place where women cur curl up and die. <laughs> Cannibal, some. Oh, that was, that was 
Okay, okay, I just caught that. Cannibal, someone who is fed up with people. <laughs> oh, I can see you just want me to hurry up and get over it. <laughs> get it over. Okay. One day when a seamstress was sewing while sitting close to a river. Hey, Al, do you have anything to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why don't you do that? Oh, sure. Sure. A uh, few notes involved. Um, one thing that we would like to ask is if you come in and you um, make the coffee or the water or the hot chocolate and there's cups and there's lids back there, please, please, please put a lid on your cup. We have these back there up in the cupboard. Those for, so. and then we have the, the disposable ones with lids. We've had a lot of spills that we, uh, Janice just spent a lot of time cleaning up the, in the hallway there. So we would really appreciate it. It really does help cut back on the cleaning. Um, we have also supplied some matches to light the candles um, in the middle there. We would really appreciate not putting them in the candle holder itself, but there's a little glass, um, little thing, bowl, dish, whatever you want to call it, on the counter with it. Please put your matches in there. You'll notice a little smoke burns on, on the that fire yeah. burns. Yeah, we've had fires. So. Yeah, they kind of they <coughs> flare up quite big. Volunteer meeting next Sunday after service. We're going to have some cookies. I will start calling people this next week. Uh, we would like all of our volunteers to please stay or come to that meeting. We have a lot of stuff to go over. We felt that if we got everybody together, then there would be less confusion when it comes to the um, expo, which is April 11th and 12th, and it's coming up quick. I've gotten a lot of donations. Jackie's mom, thank you so much, Jackie's mom. She's put together three different baskets. This one is being called a man's basket and has a bunch of Seahawks stuff in it and wine, glasses, and then we have a, a, a whole bunch of things that have been donated lately. Some jewelry, uh, books, candles, so we're going to be putting together humidor. some really good... Oh yeah, the humidor. Uh, Joe has put together, he had um, this beautiful humidor and, and leather case for cigar carrying, things like that. We're putting that together in a, in a gift. It's beautiful. You guys are going to love it. Uh, let's see, Silent Auction got that. Um, oh, recipes, recipes, recipes. We need all your recipes. Um, Lynn is still trying to put together this recipe book for the Divine Fellowship. Um, she hasn't had any more coming in lately, so we really, really, really appreciate Online people as well. She has an email address. You can email these recipes to friskynana62 at gmail.com. And that's probably the quickest way to get them to her. Please, she needs recipes. Want to give that to them again? Somebody's writing it down. Friskynana62 at gmail.com. You can also bring them in on Sundays and drop them off in the basket back on the counter back there. Have I missed anything? Janice isn't back there. Okay, I think I got everything. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this church cannot run without volunteers. So, I mean, I could spend every day thanking everyone. So here's one of them to say thank you. <laughs> oh, You're welcome. One more thing I almost forgot I had in my hands, guys and doll raffle. This is um, tickets to the Guys and Dolls in Spokane, and it's for the 26th of April. It is a Sunday at 1 p.m. Tickets are $2. These tickets were donated to us. So everything we make on it goes right into the church. And I've only sold a couple of tickets, so if you'd like to get your name in there to win these tickets, please see me, and I will sell them to you, lots of them. Thank you, Tara. Now. <laughs> At the expo, we have lectures or presentations, and I am organizing that, scheduling it. We have all of them set. What I need are timekeepers, people who sit in the back of the room and either listen to it or come back at the appropriate time, like about 20 minutes before they are to be finished, to hold up a sign that says you have five minutes. <laughs> and if they don't see it, <laughs> then we have another sign that says zero, <laughs> and then we go. <laughs> because we have 15 minutes between each lecture. 
to get the people out of there and the next person in. And there are two rooms, and the lectures are staggered at 30 minutes, so there's on the hour and on the half hour. I'm, I'm gonna pass around this clipboard, and it has a listing of all of the different lectures. And if you would put a name, preferably yours, <laughs> um, <laughs> and a phone and email, preferably yours, again, uh, on there, then I can contact you and at, you can just come to me at the expo and say, okay, I'm here and I'm ready. Uh, if you want to do more than one, that's okay too. Are there any questions about what I'm asking? Put Bill's name there for all of them. Put Bill's <laughs> name there all of them. All right. I'm going to pass that out as well. How many uh, switching here? Oneness blessing givers are there in the audience this morning? Okay. We're going to have four sessions of Oneness Blessing at the expo. The numbers, this is the third year, and the numbers increase every year, which is really cool. But I need blessing givers. <laughs> William and I can do it, but sometimes there are, you know, 15 people or 10 people come in, and so it would be helpful if I had more. So I'm gonna pass around a Oneness Blessing Giver sheet as well. And there's two pages to it, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Saturday is the 10 and 4, and Sunday is the 11 and 3. So, any questions about that? Okay. If you have any in-depth questions, see me afterwards, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, and we are, we obviously uh, record this every Sunday for YouTube, so people all over the country and the world still freaks me out, um, can actually take a look. So, hi, YouTube. And, We're almost um, at 4,000 views. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Shannon has been working um, diligently at a job, so couldn't be with us. So thank you for being back. And Gina, thank you for doing everything you've been doing for the past few weeks. Really, really appreciate it. We, we could not do that without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. One day, when a, a seamstress was sewing while sitting close to a river, her thimble fell in the river. When she cried out, Lord, the Lord appeared and asked, My child, why are you crying? The seamstress replied that her thimble had fallen into the water and that she needed it to help her husband in making a living for the family. The Lord dipped his hand into the water, pulled up a golden thimble with pearls. Is this your thimble, the Lord asked? The seamstress said, Well, no. The Lord uh, again dipped his hand into the river, held up a silver thimble rimmed with sapphires. Is this your thimble, the Lord asked. Again, the seamstress said, no. The Lord reached out again, came up with a leather thimble. Is this your thimble, the Lord asked. The seamstress said, yes. The Lord was so pleased with the woman's honesty, gave her all three thimbles to keep, and the, se keep, and the seamstress went home happy. Some years later, the seamstress was walking with her husband along the riverbank, and her husband fell into the river and disappeared under the water. When she cried out, the Lord again appeared and asked, Why are you crying? Oh, Lord, my husband has fallen into the river. The Lord went down to the river, came up with George Clooney. Is this your husband? Is your yes, cried the seamstress. The Lord was furious. You lied. That's an untruth. The seamstress replied, Oh, forgive me, my lord. It is a misunderstanding. You see, if I had said no to George Clooney, you would have come up with Brad Pitt. Then I would have had said no to him, and you would have come up with my husband. Had I then said yes, you would have given me all three. <laughs> lord, I'm not in the best of health and would not be able to take care of all three husbands. So that's why I said yes to George Clooney. <laughs> and so the lord let her keep him. <laughs> the moral of the story is whenever a woman lies, it's for good and honorable reason and the, and the best interest of others. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I bet you're wondering why I came up with all this stuff up here. Oh, yeah. 
I am too. I'm still trying to remember why I was doing it. <laughs> and for all the people on YouTube land and Christopher's relatives, hi. I'm trying to do the same thing. Hey, you just look great. Get up here. Thank you. <laughs> Put little Amy here. Make sure I don't step by. <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Right. This is little Amy. <laughs> she keeps me out of the hospital. <clears throat> Good morning. <clears throat> Spring has sprung, hasn't it? So everybody's getting ready, you know, they they're have a garden, they've been rototilling, doing all of that stuff, and they're gathering their seeds so they can plant their tomatoes and their peppers and, and their string beans, bush beans, cold beans, whatever it's going to be, or corn, or onions, and boy, the list goes on and on and on. Spring's a wonderful time, isn't it? It's really the, the earth is coming back uh, um, in song and in, in melody and music and you look around and you can see it happening everywhere. There's flowers on the trees, there's flowers in the ground. It's, it's just a beautiful time of the year. It's refreshing, especially after a long winter. Though we had a pretty mild winter compared to the rest of the country. <laughs> well, we might be a little worried in the, in the summer because we're probably going to have a little bit of a drought, but uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with it. I, um, it's interesting because all of those things that we plant, we have to have a seed. And in that seed, it doesn't matter if it's a little teeny flower or if you're planting an oak tree, in that seed is the potential for whatever it is to be. That's really amazing because when you hold seeds in your hand, they're really, really small. And when you put them in the ground, they have to struggle to become whatever it is they're going to become. They have to push roots down into the ground, and that's not easy to do. I couldn't do it. <laughs> and then they also have to take these little teeny shoots and push them up through the ground. So they get to get the sunlight, and get the moisture from, from the ground itself. So it's a lot of work, just in the beginning, stages of that seed, a lot of it. <coughs> but the potential to be whatever it is, is still there. And it grows and it grows and it grows. Sometimes, if the soil is not very good, then the growth is affected. The potential is still there, but it, the growth is affected. And you can tell um, when you have really good soil, when you're planting things, and, and when you don't just by looking at, at the harvest, at the crop itself. We're no different. Now, I'm not going to give you sex education in one one <laughs> because now I have to talk about eggs. <laughs> okay? Um, so, eggs are a little different. We're not the only ones that come from eggs. There's a lot of things that are birthed through eggs. But with an egg, it's a little different than a seed. Because in a seed, all the potential for what it's going to be is right there in that seed. In an egg, it needs another force to enter, play with it, so that the potential, whatever that's going to be, can be. That's when something very interesting comes into play. And that's what I really want to talk about this morning. And that is karma. Okay. We cannot get away from karma. It is a cosmic law. Just let gravity. Can't get away from it. It's gonna happen. If I hold something and let it go, it's gonna fall to the <coughs> gravity always works. So does karma. And karma is very interesting because depending on that back to that egg. And the two factors that have to come in together for that egg to grow into a human, the potential to be a human, there's karma involved there. With the two people that have gotten together, there's karma there. Whatever their karma is, whatever is going on with them. And then as a child, you're completely dependent 
on that environment. And if you were a seed, you would be completely dependent on that soil that you find yourself in. Be that soil really good soil or soil that's not so good. You still grow. You still have that yearning to develop, to be all that you can be. Regardless of what your environment is, but karma still plays a role. It always does. It's constant. It's never not there. We forget about it sometimes. But every time you do something that's positive and put that out into the cosmos, that's coming back. When you do something that's not so positive, <laughs> I hate to tell you this, <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> And it's generally coming back a little stronger than when it left. <laughs> I can almost guarantee that. <laughs> so when you go through life, and you see people that um, seem to have everything, and people that don't seem to ever have anything, and you see people that are going through different kinds of struggles, or, and some people that go through no struggles whatsoever, think about karma when you start looking at those things. And think about your own personal karma and where your life is right now in this moment. Everything you're dealing with. All of the stressors that you have, all of the worries that you have, all of the joy that you have, all of the good things that are going on in your life. Think about your karma because you scripted it through your karma. You scripted it. For every positive thing you put out there, you're going to get that positive back. Every negative thing you put out there, I'm sorry to tell you this, it's coming back. Before we can really move on and really sit at the feet of the masters, we've got to wipe that karma clean. We've got to have a clean slate. It's got to balance. We've got to balance the book, so to speak. And the only way you can really do that it's by constantly being positive. That means thought, too. <laughs> you know, you can say, well, I don't do anything bad, but you know, somebody cuts you off and you've got all this stuff going through your head, well, I mean, I remember, you know. <laughs> Guess what? You're putting out some vibes. You're putting out some negative vibes. I hold a C tuning fork and another C tuning fork here, and I strike this one, this one's going to vibrate. Our thoughts will do that too. Matter of fact, sound's an amazing thing because we don't hear all the sounds that are going on. We don't even see everything that's going on because our five senses don't have the ability to do that. But trust me, it's going on. So if you're thinking positively, you're doing really well. If you're constantly having negative thoughts about people or about things, Sit down with yourself and say, hey, I've got to get a hold of this. I've got to get on top of this. I've got to get this under control. I don't need to have these kinds of thoughts. If you're mad at somebody, and you're walking around for days mad at that person, and that person's la la la, <laughs> doesn't even know that you're mad, <laughs> who's the one that's suffering? Who's the one that's dealing with it? You are. They're not. The only person you can do anything with or for is yourself. You can't make anybody feel or do anything. It's impossible to do that. You can try to influence them, but they eventually make the choice, yes or no, I will do that, I won't do that. We don't make that choice for them. We can't. We might think we do, but we can't. So it always comes back to karma. And if you take a good look at your life, I remember hearing, I don't know where I heard it, a long time ago, read so many things and listen to so many stuff, but they always said that if you look at where you are right now in time and space, that's the, the accumulation of your karma. Pretty much where you are right now. So if you have a whole lot of good things going on, that's the accumulation of your karma. If you have a lot of struggles going on, that's the accumulation of your karma. If you've got struggles going on, hallelujah, get them done. <laughs> Go through them. But
Like, you know, people ask me about this cancer that I have. I'm a little Amy. <laughs> I said, I'm burning karma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> um, and I, that's truly how I feel about it. I am burning karma. You know, we, um, when I was a young man, Vietnam was going on. And I have nothing against being in the army or doing any of those things, but... I was pretty fortunate. I didn't have to go into the service during that time, even though they had the draft. So you had to go. I went and got a physical in the whole nine yards. When the whole experience was over, and I was told that they didn't want me, I was okay with that. <laughs> I remember saying to a friend of mine, it's not my karma this time. I've done that already. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. My karma with that is over. It's very interesting when you start thinking in those terms. Okay. So the biggest thing to do is to really get a hold of your self-talk. Make it positive. Self-talk's powerful. If you're in a mall and you meet somebody that you know for a long time and you're trying to introduce them, them to your friend that you're with and you can't remember their name, how many has done that? Okay. And then like a couple of hours later, maybe the next day you go, oh that was right? Yeah? Okay. That's your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind says, hey, find that name. Of course after that little meeting you forget about it. Your subconscious mind, uh 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 <laughs> it hasn't forgotten about it. It's working like night and day. I gotta find that name. I got, I got these orders, I got to find, and it, it finds the name, and then you go, ah, oh, that was. Well, your subconscious mind does that with everything your conscious mind tells it to do. Everything you're thinking. If you're thinking, oh, I can't do that, your subconscious mind goes, take it easy, guys. They don't want to do it. If you say, oh, I'm going to get this done, I'm going to, I'm going to get through this, your subconscious mind, all right, roll up your sleeves, we got work to do. So it doesn't matter what you are saying to yourself. Your subconscious mind runs with it. So really take that, couple that with karma, and you can see how powerful your self-talk can become. Can you change your self-talk into a more positive way instead of a negative way? Yes, you can. Every time you catch yourself, say, oh, that's not what I meant. This is what I meant. It'll take a little while. It doesn't happen overnight. But you'll eventually get to the point where you don't do negative self-talk. And if you're not doing negative self-talk, you have more control over what's happening with you and your karma. Okay? Because that's really what we're working on here. We're trying to get that slate clean, balance it out, so that we can go to the next level. Who doesn't want to go to the next level? Yeah, we all do. Yeah, that's why I'm going, burn the karma. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. So when something happens in your mind, and it seems like, oh my gosh, how am I going to deal with this? You should be saying, oh, thank God, I'm going to burn some more karma. <laughs> Really, that's what you should be doing. And when something really good happens in your life, you know, you meet somebody and you realize this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with, that's a really positive thing. You say, oh my goodness, I got some good karma. Because you do. All right? You're going to have good things happen to you and you're going to have things that aren't so hot happening to you. It might be karma from another lifetime coming back. Let it come through. Get rid of it. Burn it. Do as much positive stuff as you can. Okay. Clean that slate. Watch your self-talk. Because your self-talk will really determine how your karma is going to turn out. And it's really easy to change your self-talk. Because your subconscious mind is a powerful, powerful thing. <laughs> it's very powerful. And you want to be in control of it. You don't want it controlling you. Okay? So it's spring. So when you're planting your flowers or you're planting your garden, just remember, you were planted too. Not in a seed, in an egg, a little differently. Okay? 
You had an environment to grow up into. Remember, that was karma. It was karma bound. It's going to always be that way. It never ever changes. It's how it kind of works. It's one of those laws that we know it's there, but we don't think about it. Just like gravity. We know it's there. Do we think about gravity? Not really. Unless somebody mentions it, you don't really think about it. But if we didn't have it, we'd be all floating. <laughs> you wouldn't be sitting in your chairs, you'd be levitating. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> it's one of those things, it's constant. It's always there. But we're not always aware that it's there. Trust me. It is. It is. So, enjoy your spring. Namaste. opportunity to physically have a manifestation of that connection that we have with spirit. Would you join us in prayer, please? Loving spirit of light, as we take this in, help us to take in life, all of it. Help us to recognize that it is a part, all of life is a part of the journey. And help us to choose to walk with you. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As that continues around, to join us in prayer again, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this and help us to drink in a renewed sense of purpose, a renewed sense of connectedness, and help us to bring this awareness into everything that we choose to do for ourselves. And with this mindfulness, we ask a blessing from you. We ask that you bless us. And as just as this liquid enters our body and goes to every aspect of us, nourishing us, we ask that you nourish us spiritually in every aspect. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Janice uh, helped with the communion <laughs> because the um, the cups and everything were all nice and evenly spaced. <laughs> <laughs> Your Virgo is Virgo. Yeah. Yeah.
you would haul a sign out to the end of the road every Sunday, yeah. um, get the cats out of the room, <laughs> set everything up. Let uh, cats back in the room. Let cats <laughs> back in the room. Is that your company? <laughs> and then we got help. And then we got some contributions. And then we got a space in downtown Taylor. And then after looking at, oh my goodness, for years, different locations, actually buying a particular location that ended up not working out, um, and we came here. None of this would happen without you. So thank you so much. Looking forward to 17 more. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need us thinking about it. I got this thing about it. Our expo is coming up. Yay. Oh my gosh, it's just like right around the border. And um, I could use some help. There's been so much volunteer assistance. I am so grateful for that. I can use a little bit different help. I have these little push pins that I've stuck into the cardboard thing so you don't hurt yourselves. Anybody be willing to take five posters and five bulletin boards to put them on? Here, you want to hand those up? <coughs> and there's more. Go ahead there. Uh, uh, here's some suggested places. Sorry, don't think so. <laughs> Phil is not a bird. <laughs> I got it, I am. <laughs> um, and you, you can, some places you, it's better if you have a tape and just tape them onto their windows. So they'll have it. Roasters. Espresso World. Fred's. Fred Myers. They have a bulletin board. Wherever you work. Wherever you work. Adventures Underground. They, they could use a stack of oh, those now. Barnes & Noble, they have a bulletin board. Hastings, uh, Rosie's, Sage Pork, Red Lion, other hotels. Tri-Cities Visitors and Convention Bureau could have some. If we run out, let me know, I can make more. <laughs> so, okay. um, college, CBC, college, all that stuff. Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So and I'll take care of Sage tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> well, we better grab some off top. So, Mr. Phil, would you see if there's anybody else who would be with?